Hey guys, I'm Charles and welcome to another video tutorial brought to you by TheMakersWorkbench.com and Element 14. This video accompanies the final installment in my BeagleBone Black GPIO based automation using Drupal in the web series. This video will show you how to configure the Drupal website we built in the last few videos to provide additional control buttons. Before we get started, we need to do a little back end work and install a few new modules. The first thing we need to do is SSH into our BeagleBone Black and that's covered in the beginning of the tutorial um, and then we need to navigate to the doc root of our website so we'll just cd for change directory slash srv serve trip dub and then bb autocomplete uh, bb.news would be the directory and then htdocs is our doc root so we are going there that's our web doc root um, from there I'm going to show you really quick the modules we need to install um, basically we need to install one module called field collection and what field collection does is let us bundle fields together and then reuse them as a group um, it'll make a little more sense in a few minutes um, the next module we need to install is the better formats module and basically this allows us to set a text format per each field and it just makes life a little simpler and easier um, so to do that let's go back to our terminal and uh, you just want to type drush 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 dl for download and then the module name um, the first module would actually be uh, the module name would be field underscore collection so if you want to just check out the module just go to drupal.org slash project slash field underscore collection um, and once you have that installed go back and redo it the same thing for the better formats module which can be found at drupal.org slash project slash better underscore formats um, the project name is better underscore formats and that's what you would want to put in dr in the terminal um, once that's done um, you can just uh, enable both of them by typing drush en and then better underscore formats and space field underscore and then you want to uh, tack y ampersand ampersand drush cc all basically what this does is it downloads or it enables better formats and field collections and it just automatically injects the y for yes when it asks if you really want to enable them and once that's done it returns a line for drush cc all which clears all the caches this basically just makes life easier again and prevents us from having any errors due to something being cached. Um, once those are installed, you want to come back to your site. And basically what we're going to build now is this page, our automation demo page. So you can see I have control buttons for several things, but before we do that, we need to finish our back end work. And we need to go to um, hover over structure in the admin add minimal menu and come down to uh, content types and we're going to edit our basic page and we're going to manage the fields so I already have one of these built but I'm going to show you how to rebuild it really quick so um, here at the uh, you'll see a buttons field and it's actually a field collection field type so we're going to recreate that so we're going to type in uh, an add new field we're going to buttons buttons two and we're going to edit the machine name because we already have a field underscore buttons so actually we don't have to edit the field name it's already done so the field name is buttons two buttons underscore two select the field type field collection make sure that embedded is the widget and save and we're going to have a few settings we have to change once this saves okay so there's nothing on the field settings page so just go ahead and click uh, save field settings and on the next settings page there are 
there is at least one thing will change. So on our basic page settings, um, leave our label the same. We want to come down to number of values and select unlimited. Then save. Once that saves, we're going to actually go and build our field collection. So now we need to come up back up to structure and then click on field collections. With the uh, field collections page up, you can see I've already actually built this. So we're just going to uh, build a new one. Alright, so our new one will be field underscore buttons 2 and what we need to do is manage our fields. So the first field we want to add is a name field. Um, this is just the name our, our button set. Um, name, field underscore name is already taken so we need to edit that and change it to field underscore buttons underscore 2 underscore name. And then we want to select our field type and we are going to use long text. Basically I'm using long text because I want to add in some styling elements into the title. Um, the only widget option is text area multiple rows so go ahead and click save. And you'll see we have no field settings. So go ahead and click save. And on the basic page field settings, what we want to do is uh, leave our name the same. But now is where uh, we want to change our filtered text. So this is where the text format stuff we installed earlier comes into play. So click under text processing, click filtered text, and then click limit allowed text formats. And we want to set this to full HTML. Uncheck filtered plain and PHP. Um, and then we want to set our rows to 1. And we're good to go there. Go ahead and just scroll to the bottom and click Save. The next field we want to add is our code field. So just add the name code. And then we're going to go and edit our machine name because field underscore code is already taken by the one I previously created. For your purpose, you can just use field underscore code. Um, so I'm just going to buttons underscore two underscore code. Now I want to set my field type again to long text. And make sure um, you select long text and not long text in summary. We just want to use long text. And it's again going to be a text area, multiple rows, widget. And again, there's no field settings, so we just click Save Field Settings, and it's going to take us to the Advanced Setting page. Here, there will be a few changes we need to make. Again, we need to, under Text Processing, select Filtered Text, then click Limit Allowed Text Formats, and we want to set this to PHP. So uncheck Filtered HTML, Full HTML, and Plain Text. And we want to change our rows. We want to go from 5 rows to 25 rows. This just makes viewing the code easier. Um, leave our number value set to 1 and click Save Settings. So that basically just created our field collection bundle. And what we'll do with this is we'll be able to add multiple code sections to our website. And it will have the, uh, it'll have the name field and the code field attached to each, each little section we do. Since I've already created this, I'm actually going to go in really quick and delete um, the one we just created, just to clean things up a little. Um, actually, before I do that, what I want to show you is uh, how to clean the titles up a little bit on that. So go back to Structure and Field Collections. And then we're going to click Manage Display on our field underscore buttons underscore two. And you want to come in here for your name field and under label, you want to select the drop down and click hidden. Do the same for code. Click save. And basically that just hides the word name and the word code above each field um, in, the, in the public display. Um, so now we can actually come up here to structure content types, basic page, manage fields. And with that done, we can delete this one. Do not delete this 
yourself. I'm just deleting it because I have multiples now. Okay, now we're back. Okay, good. Now we can create our basic page. So we want to hover over content, add content, and basic page. What this is going to do now is create, come up with our basic page node create form. And we want to give it a title. So we're going to call this automation demo 2. Um, we want to give it a body. So let's just say something like the, these buttons these buttons control the GP GPIO pins on the Beagle. It's really hard to type with a microphone sitting between your arms. These buttons control the GPIO pins and the These buttons control the GPIO pins and relays attached to the Beagle Ball in black. You can put whatever you want. That's just what worked for me. Um, so now you'll come down and you'll see this field collection we made. So we want to create our first button and using the code that's on the website, um, that's on the tutorial, we'll actually create our button. So the first thing we want to do is give it a name. And the first one's going to control an LED, so we'll wrap it in H2 tags. And then call the name LED, LED control, and then close our H2 tags. Um, then we'll go to, our, go to the tutorial, copy the code, paste it into the code section. And when that's done, down here at the bottom, you'll click Add Another Item. And this basically adds a whole nother button set. Again, with our name for this one. This one's going to be a relay control, so it'll be relay one. We'll add our H2 tag, relay control one, then close with H2 tags. Copy the code. And then we'll add one more item for our second relay. I'm just pasting just because it's faster. Um, relay two control, copy the code, and paste. There is something I wanted to show you in the code. Um, since I basically reuse the code in each one, you could add all this into one single script, but um, for the purpose of this, I like to be able to move the buttons in and out um, as I'd like. Um, so the easy thing to do is just create these new code sections and paste each code for each specific button set in its own thing. Um, if you copy and paste the code, there's a problem that arises. If you copy and paste the same code, there's a problem that arises. Um, you have to change the variables. So here you'll see I, I changed the uh, LED set off and then LED set on. And then you come down in here and to actually more of the code down here at the bottom and it's LED set on, LED set off. I did the same for the relay. So it's relay one set off, relay one set on, and so on and so forth. Um, just make sure if your code doesn't work that you've changed your variables so that the triggers aren't actually running or triggering the same event across all the code on the same page. Um, I actually ran into that problem and felt kind of noobish when it happened. So with this done, let's come down here and give us a menu item. We'll call this Automation Demo 2. Make sure things are published. Um, actually, before you make sure it's published, come down here and set your weight to something lower than 10, because I think we went to 8 last time. Um, then make sure it's published, but we don't want it promoted to the front page. Um, then click Save. And as it saves, what you'll see is the... Uh, you'll see that the pages come up, and we have three sets of buttons. Um, if we click the LED On button, our LED comes on. If you click the LED Off button, 
the LED goes off. If you click relay one on, relay one turns on, you probably heard it there. Click it off and it turns off. And to test again, we'll check relay two. Relay two clicks on. Relay two clicks off. Um, that's about it for this tutorial. Um, follow along on the whole series and if you think if you like what we're doing or you like our channel or whatever just click subscribe you can follow us on Facebook at facebook.com slash makers workbench um, on Twitter we're at twitter.com slash makers workbench I think um, just at makers workbench works with two um, head over to element 14 check out the full tutorial give us a thumbs up there leave a comment we always want to know you know if you like what we're doing if there's something we could do better or there's something you want to see us do let us know and we'll do it um, thanks for watching and have a wonderful day.